Last week, Noah and I went on a princess cruise, and there were so many unexpected things that we loved, and a few that we just hated. Noah, my husband, is going to join me today as we do a review, because I dragged him all over the ship, because in an upcoming video, we're going to do a full cruise tour. Hi. Hi. Noah. So we just want to start talking a little bit about Majestic Princess. So Majestic Princess holds, is it a little bit more than 3,000? 30, 30, 3,600, I think, passengers. Mm -hmm. The Majestic Princess was built in 2017. And the first thing you notice when you get on the ship is the Piazza. We both kind of thought when we were looking at that, like, this is Las Vegas on the sea. What did you think when you first saw it? It's very impressive. It's very gold and glittery and glitzy. And there's spiraling staircases and glass elevators. And um, it's a very impressive first thing to see when you get on the ship. Something that was super interesting for both of us is that this ship was not designed for the U.S. market. It was designed for the Chinese market and to go up and down the Chinese coast. Because of that, Everything on the ship, all the signage was in both English and Chinese. There was a lot of, like, being being that it is a ship, there's a lot of signs on a lot of things, mm -hmm. more so than in, like, buildings and other things that you encounter. And then noticing it even, you know, you get in the shower and it says in English, caution, the water could be hot. And then it also says it in Chinese. So let's talk about our embarkation day lunch. So we got on the ship and... You go through the piazza and up, up, what is it? The Lido deck was level 16. So we went up to the Lido deck. The Lido deck is where the World Fresh Market is, which is the buffet on the ship. But then you go out to the pool deck and they have burgers and lot. It's called Burger and Lobster Grill. They also have chopsticks, which is a noodle bar, which is unique to in Majestic Princess, which is also because of the fact it was for the Chinese market. So we skipped the buffet the first day because of the crowds, and we chose to eat at the burger. Right, the burger place. The burger was good. I think I think the fries were a little cool. It seems like maybe they, they served up the fries into the basket while the burger was still cooking, and then by the time the burger was done cooking, the fries were a little cool. But if I think like what you found, if you, if you order a side of fries also, um, maybe they serve those up a little bit later. When they're right before they bring it to your table, so the fries were still hot. And we... In addition to, so you could eat at the burger place when you first get on the ship. You might eat at Chopsticks, the noodle bar, which was delicious. You could eat at the World uh, Fresh Marketplace. You could eat in the main dining room. Or if you wanted, you could go to Alfredo's, which is their pizzeria. Now, Alfredo's is one of your casual dining. So if you got the Princess Plus package, you get two meals at alfredo's so you could go there as well and it's a beautiful location it's right off the piazza you can see out to the ocean so that would be a fun place to eat for the first day as well something i learned about alfredo's first of all everything's a la carte so the pizzas i think were eight dollars so you could order a pizza and just split it like an appetizer so you could try it the three course meals were 14.99 again we could have split it so then you would get to sit in this beautiful location and try try their food would you want to do that yeah i like pizza <laughs> okay so let's talk about the other dining the complimentary dining so you can eat at the world fresh market which we did mostly for breakfast what do you think of it for breakfast i thought it was good there was a wide variety of you know cold simple breakfast things like cereals and yogurts and fruits and then there was um you know hot stuff too you could get bacon and sausage and eggs and a lot of traditional things they did have little quiches and they had a fresh omelet so you could go have your fresh omelet made so they, it was interesting the way they did it you would go place your order and then they would give you a ticket and they'd say come back in 10 minutes so the one thing I would say about the World Fresh Market is that I, so I think the first morning I ordered an omelet and I 
thought I, I paid attention to where I was so I could go back and get it. But the way that the World Place Market is set up, it's like it runs from port to yeah, starboard. Starboard. It's, left it's, right. Runs across the ship instead of the, the long way. So as you walk the long way down like where you're going to sit, you're kind of peeking in these side rows where all of the food is and it's easy to get confused because you can't you can't see a long line of all of the different things being prepared because you kind of know where you're at in that this is where you go get your waffles made though in the bakery so in the center there's the bakery and in the bakery they make a big delicious yummy top with whatever you want off uh, waffles. So those are really good. Okay. So then that's one thing you can eat that's complimentary. The next thing is they have main diners. They, unlike other ships, they have three main diners. Only two of them are open. So we went to Allegro and then we tried uh, Concerto. The food is the same. No matter what dining room, the menu's the same. The food's the same. It's just the atmosphere is a little bit different because they're decorated different. And of those two, I preferred Concerto. On the app, you can have dine your way, it's called. So if you want to have a reservation the same time, same place every night, you can put that into the app. If you want to be able to try different places or do different times, you can do that in the app too. So it was super easy. I thought the app was super easy to use you didn't really use it i didn't i didn't use it too much you didn't have to use it because i did everything but that's okay i like to do it yeah, but i appreciate you did it yeah. <laughs> swirled ice cream is on the pool deck what do you think about swirls ice cream just on the name of it i thought it was going to be soft serve and then swirls like okay chocolate and vanilla you get a chocolate and vanilla swirls like oh that sounds good so we went up there and it was um not soft serve um it was scoop ice cream you know, standard ice cream. And they did have some sprinkles and things like that that you, like toppers you could put on it. So it was, it was good, it, um, but it wasn't what I expected. Yeah, we could see the swirls makers in the back. They must have been broken. I don't know, but it was all right. It, I mean, the people were super nice. The ice cream was good. But yeah, it's not swirls. Let's see. The other restaurant that's complimentary is called, the, it's not a restaurant, but the other place you can eat complimentary is the international cafe so in the international cafe they had lots of treats and cookies we got a lot of cookies there peanut butter cookies if you like them those were good. also had specialty coffees there so if you're a coffee drinker you could go get your specialty coffee there and if you had the princess plus or the princess premiere those specialty drinks would be included with your package on the ship are the specialty restaurants. So there are three specialty restaurants. One of them is called Harmony. Harmony is a Chinese restaurant, and Harmony was the first Chinese restaurant in the United States to earn the Michelin. It was beautiful, mm -hmm. the way it was decor, the decor. And again, it's the only ship in the fleet with Harmony. In that same location on other ships is Sabatini's, which is Italian Trattoria, yeah. Another restaurant that's off the piazza, which was beautiful, and I think I would splurge. I want to find out. I don't know this. I'll find out and tell you next time we sail. If you can split a specialty dining, the restaurant I really want to try is The Catch by Rudy's. One of my viewers said it was her favorite meal. You can also dine at Crown Grill, which is a traditional steakhouse that serves cook to order steaks if you have not subscribed to my channel why not every week i'm going to bring you new fun stuff about cruising to make it easier for you please just hit that subscribe button we're going to board the ship now in the video so we can share some of the dishes that we ordered in the main dining room yes you're live what looks good i'm going to start with the baked potato soup let's see. And uh, for the main course will be the roof poik tenderloin medallions. Yo, got the salmon glavap. I have no idea what that is, but we'll find out if it tastes good. And a goat cheese vegetable mix. So here we have the 
gray short ribs. We have the pan seared cod and we have the pork tenderloin. And we also got the goat cheese and leek quiche. So I don't know what this sauce is. I'm taking a huge bite. It could be a little warmer, but the flavor is delicious. I got the crab cake. So let's try the crab cake. Ooh, I can tell it's hot. I like hot food. That is good. The menus in the main dining room always had something that was delicious. In fact, we ordered two mains and two appetizers at every meal, and we always save room for dessert. Go ahead and keep talking about the ship now. Let's talk about the Lido deck and the pools. Okay. Yeah, there was two pools, one indoor and one outdoor. Well, wait, on the Lido deck, they had two pools, remember? They had like a bigger lap pool, and then there was that fountain. Oh, the outdoor. And then there was, yeah, yeah and then the round So, So there was two main pool areas. Correct. Right. There was an indoor pool area, and then the outdoor one, you're right. It did have a couple of different ones. Um... I don't know. I mean, I guess one of the things I noticed, the outdoor one was kind of cool because the outdoor was was like two layers, and then they had jacuzzis everywhere. There was jacuzzis up on the second layer surrounding the pool, and then there was a few jacuzzis down by the pool itself. Um, that was a really large area, and there was a lot of seating there, and there was seating um, that was shaded or out in the sun, so you could choose. Um, so I thought that was laid out pretty well, and then they had, you know, like the burger is there, and swirls and that kind of stuff and it's also right outside from the lido so i mean from the world class yeah uh, the yeah, world the buffet yeah the best you could just go into the buffet and get something if you wanted and then bring it back out there and sit back down again and too. yeah it's plenty close so that yeah i agree and then that also had remember that cool like walkway the sea walk for sure the sea walk is a place where the ship kind of like it has like a walkway. Oh, I know what you're talking yeah. about. That like glass walkway yeah. thing that stuck out from the ship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you could look down into the. Yeah, water. It had a glass floor. Yeah. So that was cool. Yeah, that was super cool. And then yeah, let's now go to the Hollywood Pool Club, which is where the indoor pool was. That was gorgeous. I thought that area was gorgeous. So it, it had a pool in there. That was supposed to be an adult-only pool, though. I remember there were some children. There weren't very many children on the ship at all, so it's not like they were taking up the space for an adult. So I did think that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then off of that, when you went through, you went to the Hollywood Conservatory, which is a really interesting place. It had lots of, like, fake topiaries. Was it the back of the ship? That was at the front of the ship above the bridge. Oh, okay. Um, I think kind of like you, the, you know, you, you, they call it the Hollywood Conservatory. It didn't, there really, I didn't really see anything Hollywood about it. Mm -mm. Um, it definitely had like an Asian vibe, Zen kind of relaxation place where they had that kind of music going on. And then, like you said, the topiaries. And then they, there was a few, I don't know, different like creative musical instruments that were kind of oversized that you could go up and, and make some noise on if you wanted to. Um, which is kind of funny too, because you're supposed to be in this kind of quite, quite Zen place, but then you could go up and like pound on these different instruments. Uh, it was a nice place. We went and played cards there one time. Uh, it, it was almost too peaceful though. I thought it was very peaceful, sometimes yeah. a little too peaceful. Let's move on to entertainment. So we'll start with music. So the music that we experienced was in the piazza. Right. The piazza. And then on the main stage. And the main stage. Well, I think three places, really, because we did we did hear music three places. So, um, the piazza, you said. Um, so they would have different groups that would play there. There would be, you know, jazz. There would be singing. Um, different different things going on there, and that was cool because you could, because it's three levels, you could pick an area to sit, and you could still see and hear the music. Um, and then being in that area, you're by that international cafe. You could go get a snack or something to drink. And so that was cool hanging out there. And then, the um, they had, you know, music as part of the shows in the bow of the ship in the main theater. That was really well done. And then the other, 
I think the other place we experienced music was in the uh, aft part of the ship. There was a, a lounge, yeah, lounge back there. And then um, there was an acoustic guitar uh, singer that performed back there that was really good. Like, there was a lot to do. So entertainment-wise, you had to pick and choose because if you... Here's an example. One night, I had seen on YouTube that fountains by the pool was supposed to be super cool. So we had to choose, though. Either go see the fountains because it was at a certain time or go see a show. I wanted to see the fountains. You should have gone to the show. So you kind of just have to know what you are interested in. We both really enjoy the production shows. And those, I thought, were great. Those were really well done. I agree. On the main stage. So we saw they had Encore, which was like a full musical. Mm -hmm. And then we also saw Uptown Boys, which was... Oh, that was the, what, Billy Joel mm -hmm. tribute? Mm -hmm. That was good. And there was a comedian one night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there was, there was a lot of variety there. And then what was nice was that the shows weren't just like dancing and dancing only to mm -hmm. recorded music. Um, but it seemed like most of the shows, everything was live. The music was live, the dancing, of course. And then um, there was also more like Broadway mm -hmm. play, musical types yeah. of things that we saw. So um, there was a lot of set design and things that you got to check out. So that was cool. One thing I would say is, again, when we sailed, it wasn't a full ship. And it got pretty full in there. So if I were going during, like, if I was going there to go to Alaska, I would get to the show a half an hour early to make sure I got a seat where I wanted it. Yeah, I think so too. Then other things we did, Deal or No Deal was in there. And then they had another area called Princess Live. And in Princess Live, they had a lot of fun, like, games that were kind of like group games. It wasn't like there was one winner. It was more... Like, you would team up with other people around you, like trivia. Right, yeah, we did, like, uh, 80s trivia, 80s music trivia. Um, and there was, like, He'd some... good, because we're from the 80s. <laughs> You're not somebody into the production shows. Up on the Lido deck, they have Movies Under the Stars. So back in 2005, Princess brought Movies Under the Stars to their ships. So they have a huge, like, mega screen... And they have movies going, so at night you could go and they have the loungers covered and the blanket, things like that. But we do have a kind of, I have a gripe. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I, I, we both experienced that. And we, and we heard from other travelers, too, that they didn't really appreciate it. All day long. Running the movies during the day. Right. If you want to watch it at night, okay, I'm in a shell. I don't care. But yeah, right. Yeah, during the day, um, it was it was it was mainly because of the volume of the the movie playing. You know, it wasn't that they were showing a movie on the screen because you didn't have to watch it if you didn't want to. But it just the sound was piped everywhere on that deck, and there were speakers everywhere, and it was hard to get away from. It, so. it was so loud. So we have two areas left. Service was amazing. I thought. Yeah, as well, service was really amazing. Cabin, what do you think of the cabin? Cabin was comfortable. Um, the The bed was good. I didn't wake up with a sore back or anything, so that's good. The piazza area was amazing, and I can't imagine, like, that is the heart of the ship, and it was gorgeous, and you were always in that. You, I mean, we are in that area every day yep. for part of the day. The food? Food was good. Great. I have no, no complaints about the food at all. So entertainment? Oh, thumbs up. That, thumbs was, up. that was fantastic. It was so good. We were busy. There was, there was entertainment all the time. So the entertainment, thumbs up. The cabins were good, and the service was amazing. So I would definitely sail on Princess again. Me too. All right. Great time. Good time. Happy sailing. Oh, and if you like this one, make sure you watch this video next. And if you haven't already liked and subscribed to my channel, please do so. Happy sailing.